This is Dr. John Tolson, and you're listening to the Disciple Making Podcast. We're in a series called Critical Questions, and the question we're working on now is, what is it that Jesus Christ offers that no one else can offer? No one. What is it that he can offer? So the last few weeks, we've been talking about the fact that he can offer pardon or forgiveness. He can offer purpose. He can offer peace. And now we're going to look at the fourth ingredient today, which is absolutely a game changer. So hang with us. We'll tell you what it is in just a moment. But here we go. So uh, here's, here's some thoughts that I have and some questions I have. What will it take? What will it take? to ignite men and women in our country in their relationship with Jesus Christ to impact our cities and communities all over this country. What's it going to take? You know, apparently we've got well over 100 million men and women in this country who call themselves by the name of Jesus, Christians, Christ ones. But I don't see the impact. So what will it take? What will it take? Do we need more information? You know, I think uh, I think there's so much information disseminated out there now, some good, some bad, even, quote, Christian information, biblical information. We're inundated with information. But it's not so much uh, how much of the Bible I know uh, and have a grasp of, but how much of the Bible has a hold on me. How much of the Bible am I living each day of my life in all the different areas of my life? We have, I believe, average marriages in our country producing average parents, which are producing average children. And so, again, thank God there are exceptions to that. But I think that is plaguing our country. Why do so few men and women hesitate with confidence to point other people who don't know Christ to Christ? Why do we hesitate? Uh, who have you helped recently come to know Jesus Christ and you've encouraged them to give their life to Christ? If not, why not? How much of your, your time, your life is spent on more stuff, on uh, comfort, on money, uh, on the pursuit of, uh, of physical comfort, etc.? The list goes on. The question I have is, Where's the fire? Where's the passion for Christ and the passion and the fire to want to make a difference for him? Listen, I'm going to give you a thought here. You can go to church and sit in the pew all your life and still go to hell. I can't tell you how many people over the years that I have communicated or taught in churches and given these people who've been in church forever the opportunity to give their lives to Christ, and they've done that saying things like, I never knew what I was supposed to do. I thought if you went to church, you automatically were a Christian. You were a Christian. That's not what the Bible says. It's, it's, it has to be a decision that each individual makes when they understand the gospel, the good news of Christ, who he is, what he did, why he did it, why I need it, why they need it, and how I get it. I got to make a move. And so uh, the next point is God expects a whole lot more of us, a lot more of us as followers of him, than just sitting in a pew, being on committees, and giving a little money, a whole lot more. And if we're going to see this nation change, then I think it's on the back of Christians, men and women, that need to get ignited. So let me read something to you here that was passed along to me. It was from a man named Michael Green in a book that he wrote called Evangelism in the Early Church. He said, the fact that Christians in the first century, influenced their world for Jesus Christ far more than Christians do in our day is an amazing fact. Their world was more openly hostile to Christianity than ours. They were far fewer in number. They did not hold any influential, influential positions. They did not have uh, the same uh, access to technology or money that we have. Yet in a span of 30 years, they succeeded in spreading the kingdom of God from Jerusalem to Antioch, to Corinth, to Ephesus, and then to the capital of the Roman Empire itself. 
Christians today have more established rights. They are greater in number. They are more influential. They hold some of the most influential positions in the land. They have all the money and technology they need. Yet, their influence in the world seems stifled and anemic by comparison. He goes on to say that he believes their strength was in their identity. They were sojourners. And while we are American Christians, they were pilgrims, citizens of heaven, just passing through this life on their way home. The reality of eternity is the ultimate orifice through which all of our thinking must be channeled in order to be effective. The more we become conscious of eternity, the more nearly Christian we become. And then he goes on to say this. The pastor of a large Baptist church in Moscow said he had 5,600 members, 5,600 members. So my friend asked, well, how many attend? He said 6,000. I told him that this was a little different ratio than we had here in Texas. He said, yes, they had about 400 who were not ready yet to take the identity of Christian, but they did attend. And then he used a very interesting phrase. He said, in Russia, we have no four-wheel Christians. Those who ride to their baptism, ride to Easter, ride to the Christmas service, and ride to their funeral service. Woof. Four-wheel Christian. Kind of gets his point over. So listen as we close to this passage of Scripture. And this is from 1 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 4 or 5 in the Message Bible. See if this doesn't sound like the world in which we live in today. Don't be naive. There are different times ahead and difficult times. As the end approaches, people are going to be self-absorbed, money-hungry, self-promoting, stuck-up, profane, contemptuous of parents, crude, coarse, dog-eat-dog, unbending, slanders, impulsively wild, savage, cynical, treacherous, ruthless, bloated windbags, addicted to lust, and allergic to God. They'll make show of religion, but behind the scenes, they're animals. Stay clear of all these people. So you say, what do we need? What do we need to be the men and the women God wants us to be? What do we need to be the husband and wife God wants us to be? What do we need to be the father and the mother God wants us to be? What do we need to have the, to be the kind of grandfather and the grandmother that God wants us to be? What do we need to be able to be the friend to others that God wants us to be? What do we need to be the representative of Christ in the world in which we live that he wants us to be? It's one thing we need. One thing. We need power. There is a power outage. There is a power shortage. There is power, if you're a Christian, that you have that perhaps you've not tapped. You say, what is this power? Well, stay tuned. We're going to talk about it next week. You think about that. Thanks for listening to the Disciple Making Podcast. Check out our website at thetulsagroup.com and sign up for my weekly encouraging videos called Red Glasses Talks to come to your email every Monday morning. You can also find me at Dr. John Tolson on social media. I'd appreciate it if you'd leave me a review and share with a friend.